We can all agree on that Charlie Parker, John Coltrane and Michael Brecker are some of the strongest players ever. Charlie Parker never disappoints with his amazing chromatic enclosures. Coltrane gets straight to the point, no bebop fuss. Only scales and arpeggios and very little pieces of bebop scales. Michael Brecker would use the direct Coltrane post, but still use the bebop scale, but move in and out of the key, adding superimposed alternate chords. Let's take a trip through their chromatic approach and see how you can apply this to your playing. Charlie Parker plays amazing enclosures. In this phrase, and of course in all other phrases, Charlie Parker reaches a point where he needs to resolve to the next target note. With Charlie Parker, this is often resolved in a chromatic phrase leading to the target note, a chromatic enclosure. When using the chromatic enclosure, you can get from anywhere to anywhere on the horn. And this is really a strong side with the chromatic enclosure. In this line, ending in the second bar on the fifth of the chord. But the line continues and you see the chromatic enclosure around the F sharp. Because you have the power of the chromatic approach note and the chromatic enclosure in hand, you can actually resolve to any target note anywhere. Here you see in the third bar I'm resolving to the C sharp on the D major using a chromatic enclosure, then moving on to that F sharp using a chromatic approach note underneath. Training this technique, I compose licks leading towards the target notes I want. The trick is to get flexible enough to being able to lead to every target note in the chord using the Charlie Park chromatic enclosure. The practice setup would look like this. Starting very small with the chromatic enclosure here leading to the seventh of the D major. Bit by bit I add till I have a full bar. And finally I end up with having a full phrase. And my building block is that chromatic enclosure where I build backwards in the line. You notice that I build around many of the same building blocks to find many ways to lead to the same target note so I make more lines with the same chromatic enclosure. This trains your ability to resolve to the wanted target note but being flexible around the line you put before it. If you want to dig into this, get the lesson manual on Patreon with lots of Charlie Parker chromatic enclosure building blocks and a lot of licks. <laughs> Coltrane is a different case. He definitely studied bebop, but he moved away from the chromatic enclosure, almost only using the bebop scale. So the trademark of the bebop scale is to hit all the target notes of the chords you are moving. This gives Coltrane a much more direct sound, getting straight to the point, hitting those target notes right on, no chromatic enclosures. Where Charlie Parker is using extended chromatic enclosures, getting a much more disrupted line. You hear the direct sound in Coltrane's playing because he will avoid chromatic playing and only using this part of the bebop scale. Coltrane's direct sound is a result of him avoiding chromaticism. He will sparingly use the chromatic passing tone of the bebop scale. Another feature that makes the direct lines maybe a little bit out of the chromatic topic he's dividing his lines into four note cells. And this adds up to the seemingly simple Coltrane lines compared to the Charlie Parker lines. But there's more to it. Coltrane is using the full scale to create tension and focus the full scale into hitting that target note. Only using the chromatic passing tone to emphasize the chord function, not the resolve. Coltrane will use the bebop scale, so adding a chromatic passing tone between the root and the seventh of the scale. But he will also use it on minor chords. Here is an example on G minor 7. And in the previous line, you see he's adding the chromatic passing tone both on the G minor and the C7, playing that C7 bebop scale. And also in this example, you see he's adding an extra chromatic passing tone, again to emphasize the function of the chord. This time between the ninth and the root, he added this chromatic passing tone to hit that bebop scale on the C7, making it all fit the function. This example illustrates Coltrane's chromatic approach very well, I think. The basic principle of Coltrane's use of chromatics are adding chromatic passing tones between scale notes, making the line hitting the intended target notes to support the function of the chord, almost never using chromatic enclosures. This direct approach makes it more simple to make Coltrane inspired licks than Charlie Parker inspired licks. Coltrane licks sounds almost classical. 
When constructing Coltrane licks, I really look at the target notes in the chord function I want to hit. Then I accordingly add the direct way to the target note. Using the chromatic passing tone or no chromatic passing tone. In this way you get a very direct sound and Coltrane would always go for the direct sound. Let the natural sound of the harmonics lead the way to the target note. Using the chromatic tones to play clear harmony. I would train this by making one bar phrases to get a clear overview. To really get into this direct sound. And in the lesson manual I of course added a lot of these one bar lines so you can get into the direct sound of Coltrane. <laughs> Michael Brecker has both listened to Charlie Parker and John Coltrane, of course. His thing is a mix of Charlie Parker and John Coltrane. <laughs> Using a lot of chromatics, unlike John Coltrane, but again very much as John Coltrane, he's playing directly towards these target notes he wants to hit. Not using a lot of chromatic enclosures like Charlie Parker. In this line it's very clear that Michael Brecker is using a lot of chromatic bebop lines to get to his target notes. <laughs> using this step between the root and the seventh. Building small parts of the bebop scale. Leading towards your target note. When I hear Michael Brecker play, it's like there's no limit to where the notes can come from and where they're leading to, as long as they have a very strong leading effect towards that target note he wants to play. So I'm starting on this really off note, the E flat on A7 flat 9. But in this way I get to play a chromatic line towards that C sharp. So the target note is more important than where I'm starting. In the first part of this lick I try to prepare for that E flat to make it something special. And then I move into the C sharp with that chromatic bebop scale. I'm playing that E flat a little bit longer over the bar line to really emphasize it. <laughs> When theoretically you can add any chromatic note to any target note, you really need to be versatile in using these chromatic patterns. So I'd really suggest that you practice these chromatic patterns in all 12 keys. Slowly start to add these chromatic patterns together to make full lines. The first chromatic line I'm playing, I'm starting outside on that G flat, moving into E. I'm starting on that G flat because I really want to play that E. The target note actually defines the starting notes, it's two chromatic steps above, aiming precisely for the intended target notes by adding the chromatics in front of it. To take in these chromatic steps of three amazing jazz giants is a huge thing. Therefore I recommend you to take a look at the lesson manual on Patreon. You'll find lots of written out licks, exercises and chromatic building blocks, ready to use for easier application in your playing. Check out the strong outside playing of Michael Brecker or check out the extremely powerful four note cells of John Coltrane in these two videos. Play music, have fun.